A gray level co-occurrence matrix characterizes the texture of an image by calculating how often pairs of pixels with specific values and in a specified spatial relationship occur in the image. It provides a statistical representation of the spatial dependencies between pixel values. By defining a pixel operator, it captures information about how neighboring pixels interact in terms of their gray level values. In order to understand how to form these matrices, let's start with an example and define a position operator as one pixel to the right and one pixel below. In our example, we're using a very simple image of size 5 by 5 that consists of pixel values that only have this limited range of pixel values. The GLCM matrix that we see on the right was obtained as follows. The position on the first row and last column indicates that we are looking for pixel value 0 to the right and below of a pixel value with value 2. And as we highlight with a red circle on the image, that would be the only case for this example. For the 4 that we see in the matrix, that comes from searching for the pixel values of 1 to the right and below a pixel value with also a value of 1, as highlighted in the image on the left. This high value 4 in matrix C indicates that there is a line at 45 degree angle of pixel intensity 1. What we are basically doing is that for each pair of pixels, the GLCM records the frequency of occurrence of specific combinations of gray level values. The resulting matrix then contains information about the relative positions and intensity of pixel pairs. This technique is often used for texture analysis, and we will demonstrate this with examples of images like the ones shown here, where we will classify as class 1 for the left and class 2 on the right. If we analyze the images with all possible intensity gray level values, we will end up with GLCM matrices of size 256 by 256. It is common then to quantize the image so that we can obtain matrices of lower sizes in order to speed up the computations. Rather than showing examples of these matrices with numerical values, we will be showing them as images. Here are different examples for different quantization levels. Here we can see how the structure of the matrices differ between the different classes. The position operator, as we will refer from now on as an offset, used in this example was 15.8 and I'm highlighting it in red on the image on the top right so you can have a feeling of the distance of the pixels as well as the direction. On the top of the matrices you will find the maximum count in the matrix itself. That is the number of pixels in the image that comply with the operator that we define. Note that the size of the matrices correspond to the number of grade level values used after quantization. The values of the maximum counts per class is the following. As we can see, this metric alone wouldn't be enough to distinguish between the two classes. Using different values of quantization still doesn't perform as well as we would like to. Nevertheless, we will keep the number of grade level values to 32 and make some other changes, which will be to change the value of the offset. We will change the value of the offset in order to detect vertical lines as one of the class has them and the other class doesn't. Just note in the circle that I will be showing the offset in that position. We can see that with those changes, the feature becomes better, thus making the offset value critical to obtain a good feature for classification purposes. Let's change the offset value from 15.0 to 30.0. As we can see, we can obtain better results. Let's change it to 46.0. Now let's try 92.0. By now we have realized that a good offset for this particular problem is 46.0 and that working with the total number of grade level values of 32 are actually both good options. Dividing the co-occurrence matrix by the total number of occurrences we in fact change the values to probabilities and this will become the metric to use. And the maximum probability will become a texture feature that we may be able to use to distinguish between different classes. Here n corresponds to 32, the total number of grade level values. 
More texture features can be defined from the co-occurrence matrix and they can be found in the following references. I will be using this small dataset consisting of 16 images per class. Several features and a brief description of them will be presented until the end of the video.